Kaaba is the name of a cube-shaped building constructed by the Prophet Abraham and his son Ismail as a symbol of monotheism. It was built in an arid land located in the middle of tough and dry Hijaz Desert. Abraham's children and descendants settled there and the city of Mecca took shape gradually. People started traveling from different spots to Mecca for rituals. The travels turned the city into a trading center and a place where caravans met. But at the same time, widespread communications deviated the monotheism faith. Over years, monotheism was superseded by idolatry as a result of the relationship with idol worshippers. Kaaba, which was the center of monotheism, became a place for preserving and worshipping the idols. Monotheists were then in minority. In 570 AD, Muhammad was born into a monotheist family which had descended from Abraham. Born orphan, Muhammad lost his mother when he was only six. His grandfather became his guardian. Two years later, that is at the age of eight, Muhammad's grandfather also passed away and his uncle became his guardian. Like most inhabitants of Mecca, Muhammad's family was also involved in trade. At the age of 12, Muhammad experienced his first trade trip when his uncle was traveling to the Levant. Muhammad gained fame for honesty and trustworthiness and he was elected as the trustee of the tribe, i.e. those who wanted to travel placed their assets in trust with Muhammad. Due to such features, a renowned, rich and honorable businesswoman in Mecca, Khadija, assigned Muhammad, now 25, the task of leading her business caravan. Upon return from the first trip, 40-year-old Khadija, who was now familiar enough with Muhammad's virtues, asked his hand for marriage. Muhammad accepted her proposal and they tied the knots. Over the coming 15 years, they lived a life full of love and peace and had several children. During this time, Muhammad was respected by each and everyone in Mecca, although he detested idolatry. He lived among the idol worshippers and there was no confrontation or conflict between them. Throughout all those years, Muhammad regularly went to a cave near Mecca to offer prayers to God and contemplate in silence and solitude. That was exactly where Muhammad started a new life at the age of 40. As soon as he announced he had been ordained as the messenger of God, everything changed. Gradually, his status among the influential figures of Mecca and the respect they paid to him was replaced with opposition and hostility. Muhammad was threatened to stop talking about his prophethood or he would be killed. He survived several life attempts, bribed him as magician everywhere. Later, some even called him a crazy poet. The rubbish was thrown away at him and he was pelted with stones. However, he was still a trustee in the tribe. When they noticed that despite all such enmity, he was winning over more and more followers, he was offered tempting financial compensation in return for stopping his campaign. He rejected downright. He also strongly dismissed suggestions to head the tribes and marry the most beautiful girls in Mecca. Khadija wholeheartedly supported Muhammad. Seven years after Muhammad's prophethood began, he and his few followers were ostracized and had to live in a ravine near Mecca for three years. They were subject to the toughest sanctions. Any dialogue, communication or transaction with them was banned. Khadija, who was once one of the richest people in Mecca and lived a faithful life with Muhammad for 25 years, starved to death. Abu Talib, Muhammad's uncle and guardian, was the biggest supporter of Muhammad because he was the head of the tribe. He died shortly after Khadija. Muhammad was now exposed to life threats. However, he did not show any sign of agreement to compromise. Amid tough pressure, an overture happened. Delegates from two tribes in the city of Yathrib met with Muhammad, accepted Islam and invited him to settle in their city. Muhammad secretly traveled from his birthplace to Yathrib at night, exactly when Mecca's influential figures plotted to murder him. Of course, before leaving Mecca, he had told his cousin Ali to return what he was holding in safekeeping for his enemies. 
As soon as Mohammed stepped in the city, Yafa was renamed Medina. He built a mosque practically laying the first foundation of Islam. At this mosque, Muslims were influenced by Mohammed's instructions and turned into a great force. They managed to counter their enemies in Mecca and elsewhere. Eight years after his migration to Medina, Muhammad led a mighty army of Muslims that far terribly conquered Mecca without any conflict. All of those people who were once his implacable enemy and had piled up the strongest pressures on him were all granted amnesty while Muhammad had the power to seek vengeance. The idols inside Kaaba were broken down and most people of Mecca converted to Islam. Of course, nobody was forced to do so. Jews and Christians were allowed to practice their own religion freely at their own places of worship. Two years later, Islam dominated the entire Arab island and top politicians in the world dispatched their delegates to Medina for talks after they realized that this new religion would soon penetrate Europe and Africa. In his battle with idol worshippers of Mecca, Muhammad had only 313 troopers and two horses. But now, he was commanding a 30,000-strong army with 10,000 horses. During those days, an Arab Bedouin came to see Muhammad. Overwhelmed by Muhammad's glory, he was stuttering and his body was trembling. Muhammad embraced him and said, Oh brother, please feel at home and take it easy. I'm no king. I'm the son of a woman who used to eat simple and stale food, just like you. I used to milk goats myself. In his last days in life, Muhammad was living in a small room near the Medina Mosque. Inside his room, he had a mat made from sheepskin and a carpet made from palm tree leaves. 23 years after he was named the Messenger of God and he was at the pinnacle of power, when Muhammad died in 632, he had nothing but a camel and his body armor was held in pound by a Jew in exchange for barley. Now, 1400 years on, more than one and a half billion people from across the globe adore Muhammad as the last messenger of God and consider him as someone who came to complement the message of his predecessors, Noah, Abraham, Moses, and Jesus.